Hello everyone, today we are looking at the steps to convert uh, the STL files into uh, a format compatible with 3D Canvas, which is uh, usually we use GLB or GLTF. But uh, you might think, yeah, we already covered it in a previous tutorial, but I have an updated one that one makes the models better and two I'm showing you how to use the new uh, Draco compression feature that's in 3D Canvas 1.0. So I will show you both methods depending if you are already using 1.0 or you're still on a previous version, but uh, basically the process is the same and you will have a better result. So as always, we start with a new Blender window, so you don't need Blender knowledge. I will guide you step by step. If you follow to the letter, you should be able to easily do this. Um, the first step is to actually get an STL model I've got mine from DM's workshop. Uh, there is a link, I'm gonna put a link in the description, but uh, from that site, uh, it's a guy that has all like different minis uh, completely free. So you just register an account on Shapeways, the website where it hosts the stuff. And if you open a mini, it will have a price, but if you open a mini, you can go down and download the model. The price is just to get it uh, 3D printed and sent to you. So I grabbed uh, a model that, is kind of big, so we can see how uh, how big the difference is. So we have an ancient gold dragon. Let's see what we do. So first thing I'm gonna tell you, uh, this is 31, 32 megabytes, the STL file, which is obviously like too big to actually be used uh, in a regular sessions, because if you have to send it to all your players, it's gonna take forever. So we start with general. So just hit general and you will have this uh, scene here. You see that you have a camera, cube, a light, we don't care about any of this, so hit A to select everything and delete on your keyboard to remove everything. Now we will just import our STL. So we go to File, Import, STL. You will get a window that is not going to show in the um, stream, but basically what you want to do is simply find your STL file, select it and hit Import, STL. I'm going to select mine double click my file and it should import our gold dragon there we go so it's a bit big uh, we don't really care about the size to be honest i'm using middle mouse button to pan and scroll wheel to uh, zoom sorry middle mouse button to rotate scroll wheel to zoom and shift middle mouse to pan so we have our model and we are gonna need to actually rotate it you can see that we have axes here so we want the model to face towards the X. So it needs to follow this red line. So we need to rotate it by 90 degrees, basically, on the Z axis, which is the blue one here. So very easy. Um, we simply, we are simply gonna rotate this. So shift, uh, whoops, uh, R to rotate. You, you will see that you will get locked in some weird uh, angle of rotation. So just hit the axis. We want to rotate on uh, Z and we want uh, 90. And then hit Enter and you have your thing rotated. So now this is rotated correctly. We want to do one thing, very simple, which is to reduce this geometry because it's very detailed, as you can see, and we don't really need the detail. You can keep it as detailed as you want, Keep in mind that the more detail, the more uh, expensive it's going to be to render and all that stuff. Because these are models that are not like meant for games, they are meant for 3D printing, so they are like max detail. But we don't really care about max detail, so we're going to reduce it. So, how to reduce the detail? First thing first, make sure your model is selected, so you can see the orange outline. Second, on the right, go to the wrench icon, modifier properties, right here, this wrench. We want to add a modifier, so click Add Modifier, and then on Generate, we want to go to um, Decimate. So click Decimate, and you will get this. Now you can see that this has uh, 6,500,000 faces, so uh, we want to make it smaller. This is the ratio, so if we put it a half, it will go to like 300,000 faces. So let's say we want something like 0 
It's going to take a bit, depending on your hardware to process. There we go. So this is still a lot of faces, but uh, let's say that this like is a dragon, so it's probably going to be big. Usually for like uh, one by one tokens, I like to keep it uh, around 20k faces. But for a bigger model like this, you're probably going to have one dragon on the field, like as a boss battle or something. Um, I prefer to keep it a bit uh, with a bit more detail. So this is uh, fine. And now what we want to do is we go in this modifier. So right now this is temporary. We actually didn't modify the model. We just we are just seeing how it looks once it's modified. So to apply, still on the right, there is this little arrow here. You click apply. And you wait a bit for it to do its processing. And there you go. Now we have our uh, lower poly model. You can go as low as you want. You can see how it looks. If you go right click shade smooth, you will see mostly how it will look. You will notice that unfortunately, it's going to kind of do this thing on the base when you do this. And there is not a lot you can do about it from my experience. So let's take a further step before we export. We want to prepare this because maybe you want to texture it in game. I'm not saying you're going to have like the perfect texture, but maybe you want to apply like a marble texture, a gold texture or whatever. So for doing this, we need a UV map. Uh, you don't really need to know what it's for, but basically uh, it tells the 3D model which of the triangles that make up the geometry corresponds to which part of an image that you fit it. So. To do this, we want to go into edit mode. You can either hit tab on your keyboard or here on the top, you go into edit mode. Uh, remind, keep in mind that you need to have the model selected. So we go into edit mode, go to UV, and you do smart UV project. So just click this, leave all as default, and then just wait it for it to do its thing. It's gonna process the image and automatically assign all the stuff that it needs to assign. So we don't need to do it manually. And we can look at the UV if we if you want. You don't need to do this step. It's already ready to be exported, but I'm going to show you the UV. So we are on layout now. If we go to UV editing, you will see on the left here that it basically uh, matched the all the triangles to where they go on the texture. So let's go back to layout. Now it put us back in object mode, but if you were in edit mode, you can just switch back between the two or using the tab key does the same thing. Now we are ready to export. So uh, select your model, file, export, and we're gonna export to GLTF. You need an add-on for the GLTF. So to enable the GLTF add-on, it's included in Blender, but you need to enable it. So you're not gonna see the window, but go to edit, it preferences, it will open a window. In this window, on the top right, there is a search box. You just hit search for GLTF, and you will see uh, that uh, an import export GLTF format option will appear. Just check the box, uh, save, close, and you're done. You will get this export and GLTF option. So now we go to export GLTF. OK, so now we are ready to export. Uh, I have a folder here for the Dragon export. I'm going to call it Dragon Uncompressed. I'm going to do two exports. So the first one will be with this compression option disabled. And I will do another one with the compression option enabled. Uh, this is what is going to trigger the Draco compression. That is the new uh, capability of 3D Canvas 1.0. So let's, I'm going to save and uncompress, then open this same exact window and check this box and just click export. Nothing else you need to do. So now you're not going to see my window, but I'm going to check how uh, big the files, like the file difference. Because if you remember, this was 32 megabytes before. So the uncompressed file is almost 5 megabyte, 4.9. The compressed one is 775 kilobytes. OK, so now we are back in Foundry and we can see how our model looks. So let's take this uh, random token and let's grab 
uh, the model. So I have the Dragon Export folder. There we go. So I have the compressed and uncompressed. Let's load the uncompressed first. I'm going to remove any texture and just load it as is. And now we can see how this dragon is. So let's actually make it uh, a bit bigger, like 5x5. Five five. Okay, it's a bit too big, but sure, why not? All right, you can see that we still got like pretty good uh, detail on the dragon. So burn this image in your mind. Now I'm gonna load the compressed one. And there you go. It looks exactly the same. And because we did the UV thing, uh, that means that now we can actually grab like a texture. I'm gonna grab a texture from uh, Forgotten Adventures. So I'm gonna get uh, the marble. There is a white. I like the white because you can like colorize it. And I'm gonna get plastic or wood. It doesn't really matter. So basically you will be able to apply a texture to it. And then since this is white, you can kind of uh, colorize it as you wish. There we go. Still got some more grunge to it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.